All right, we're here with Colorado Caddy, um, fresh off the seat of this crazy journey that we've, um, a lot of us have kind of talked about and followed and, you know, really here to kind of talk about that and, and, um, and see how, see how it was. Um, and I think, I think the first question that a lot of people are really interested in is like, what? crazy pills do you take uh to come up with an idea like this like how how did that start tell us uh, tell us you know months or years ago or whatever so i mean um i've uh i started riding just electric vehicles um little electric boards personal stuff like that about five and a half years ago um kind of it just part of something of my own recovery while i was riding electric skateboards i did one day I had did 128 miles in eight hours on, on, skateboard? on three electric skateboards. Okay. Um, right. To the point where like I was sitting cross-legged eating my lunch while I was riding down the trail. Um, and I, I loved every minute of it. I was doing distance competitions with the electric skateboards for a while was winning, winning. And then elect electric unicycles got involved. So I kind of stopped doing that. Um, gears fast forward by, we end up getting some Surons. Um, and I couldn't get off my bike. I became, I think what a lot of people, what happens with a lot of people, they either get a bike and can't get off YouTube about them or they can't get off of YouTube about them and then get a bike. <laughs> either way, the two kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. And so when we got the bikes, we just started watching YouTube video, YouTube video. The first thing that pops up a lot when you're watching Suron videos is A, Suronster, and then B, Mega Ride footage. Mm -hmm. So we started seeing these Mega Rides and... I told my wife, I want to go to a mega ride more than you can imagine. Um, and we would just watch them like they were movies almost. Right. I had a buddy give me a call one day, and he wasn't actually a buddy. Um, he was just a guy I followed on Instagram. Willie Stunts gives me a call. Hey, I'm in Colorado Springs. You have all these reptiles. Can I stop by your house and see the reptiles? Yeah, sure. Come on, because we collect reptiles. We have like 20 different species in our living room. Whoa. Um, huge tanks everything like that snakes so yeah, yeah separate yeah, conversation yeah, yeah whole different uh, conversation yeah. <laughs> but so he comes by he wants to see those and he lives in texas where the mega ride was going to happen okay um asked me hey are you going to be at the mega ride i tell him dude um honestly i don't think i could get a ride down there um but if i could i would ride my bike there you know he kind of joked about it oh dude no one's rode that far impossible hopefully we can figure out a ride right. the minute which is what everybody said, which right? is what everybody said. i mean riding your bike from colorado springs to austin texas seems impossible right yeah and so when that was mortals when that word came up um it kind of rubbed me wrong i don't like being told something's impossible especially when i know it's not regardless this isn't this isn't me leaving from my house to go to the moon. This isn't me wanting to become a doctor in six months. At the end of the day, this is just a bike ride. Um, and so I started looking into it. Okay, so I hopped on Google Maps. Started looking at things. This is completely doable and it's something I want to do. I want to ride 1,055 miles on my bike <laughs> to a mega ride. And it, it transformed into something way bigger than what I had intentionally wanted it to be. Right. I, I just wanted to make it to make a ride and I love being on my bike. So eight, 10 day trip to get to another ride. That's doable. Yeah. That's doable. <laughs> yeah. And so, so it, it just became like a really big planning process. And so right. I set out to do. So speaking of that, like how, I mean, how do you plan for something like that? I mean, how do you like what, I mean, clearly don't, you know, you don't have to go into every single step, but like, what, what do you have to, like, what are the logistics involved in that? Like, you know, take us, right. take um, us through that. So, so basically you sit down like you would any ride you were going to go out on in somewhere where you don't know where you're going. Um, Google maps, hop on Google maps, right. put out a rough draft and go from there obviously google maps the uh, the charging spots weren't close enough so i had to adjust a couple things from there mm -hmm. so it, it started as a google map from colorado springs to austin texas then started went to google map from colorado springs to pueblo colorado spring or pueblo to la junta right. la junta to springfield okay. so on and so forth and like in how many mile segments like what like what at first at first before motoclops got involved 
I was looking at it in 45 mile segments because that's okay. what a stock battery would do. Then I started looking at it in 80 mile segments because I was going to bring a second stock battery. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically what it was. It was a charge spot at a time is how I looked at the whole ride. Right. I didn't look at it as necessarily I'm going to Austin. I looked at it as, okay, first day I'm riding the La Junta. Yeah. How hard can that be? You know? And then I would just ride each day to, to the next spot. Um, the one thing that aside from the, the route planning process, you have to, it was planning out something that hadn't been done. Sure. Nobody, not many people even went that far in any e-bike, but then you're getting into e-motos, electric dirt bikes. Um, the gear was a whole process to plan for. Um, I had planned backpacking gear that was light enough to still be able to carry on my bike and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Had to plan for which worst case scenarios do I plan for? Right. Because you can't plan for everything. You can't plan you, you for can't everything. You can't for everything. Um, like you told me, you can't carry a whole spare bike. <laughs> so you have to... You have to plan for the unplanned and the most likely of unplanned things. Mm -hmm. Flat tires, chain braking, yeah, yeah. things like that. Those are little things. Um, but the rest of it, you kind of just have to hope for the best and go with. Yeah. Man. <laughs> That's amazing. So then, you know, part of that planning process, I mean, obviously you've got to make changes to your bike. Yes. You know, like when, when I first met you, your bike was pretty much stock yes. you know you just had some bars and some tires on there what what changes did you make to the bike you know to kind of make it over a thousand miles so battery was absolutely essential right um, yep getting into a bigger battery and what we did was we ran the 60 volt 65 amp hour so that i could still run my stock controller um just because con changing a controller at the time wasn't really an option of something I was going to do. I wanted a little bit of the reliability of the um, stock controllers because that's what I know. Mm -hmm. You know, I hadn't known anything else before. Sure. Then, so that's what I wanted to go with. Um, the seat upgrade obviously was something that had to, no one wants to ride on a Suron for that far anyway, <laughs> um, especially on a stock seat. Yeah. I mean, if you're a sitter, if you know, there's like the, yeah, people that ride are either sitters or standers, right? Like I'm, I stand, right. but I ride with a lot of sitters. Like when you sit down for even 20 miles, it starts, you know, to those hurt. like yeah. those stock. When feet. you stand up for even 20, 30 miles, right. the yeah. balls of your feet start yeah, going. Your legs, yeah. believe me. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay. So, uh, the battery, the seat, like what else? Like where battery seat. And honestly, all I did for this trip was battery seat and tires. Um, other than that, the bike was stock. I think we did a seat extender as well. Mm -hmm. and other than that, the bike was stock. I ran a stock belt. I ran stock chain. I stopped stock brake setup. Um, I ran stock tubes the entire time. I brought <laughs> a spare tube. I actually ran over a nail the day I got back home and it, took my bike out. I ran over a nail, down. but the whole time I was gone but for a thousand miles, but for a thousand fifty five miles, everything on my bike held perfect. My gosh, my gosh. I mean, that's 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 luck, you know, it, clearly, it's sheer luck. clearly, it's sheer clearly luck. good planning. But that's luck. I mean, you know, you're because I, I, I imagine um, your route, you know, you were probably driving like on the side of the highway, like on the, on the shoulders I took, of a lot of roads. I took all back roads. The two highways I got on, I was completely on the shoulder of the highway and the rest of it were back roads and dirt roads. Um, dirt roads cool. that are not in Colorado that don't have Colorado tax money taking care of them. Right. <laughs> are are washboarded out there very soft sand insane rocks um so the fact that my tires alone made it through that without catching a flat right was incredible to me um i would obviously do little things i would cheat clean my chain loop my chain every day mm -hmm. things like that but for the most part i'm not a mechanic um and i think that that was one of my biggest fears going into this was if something happens i have the part to change but am I actually going to be able to change these parts on the road? Right. Um, so having you guys go over the bike before I left, that was huge peace of mind. Just knowing, hey, some guys that really know what they're doing mm -hmm. went through my bike, made sure it was okay. It's good for the way. And I mean, the word 
made sense. You know, you guys said it was going to be good. It was good. Well, <laughs> we, yeah, well, I mean, we, we definitely, you know, went, went through it, keep it like thinking, okay, well, this has got to last for, right. you know, not only a thousand miles, but then through this mega ride. I mean, how long, how many days was the mega ride? So in um, Austin? we did add it up and that wasn't something I didn't want to add it into the rest of my trip because I didn't want to confuse people. I did another 560 miles in three days while I was in Austin. What? Yeah. And, and how long did it take you to do the 1,055 miles? It took me 1,055 miles. It took me 10 days to get there. Okay. Nine days to get there. Nine days. But you did half of that same distance, more than half of that same the distance. Mega ride in city limits. Yeah, in three, in three days. Yes. Um, I think when I was in Austin, the longest time, and it actually kind of became a joke with the guys I was staying with and a lot of the guys that met me out there because I had rode so far. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, everyone was kind of expecting me, hey, take a break, chill out in the motel room for a day and then get a hold of us. I got to my motel room. I took my backpack off and I was calling, who's in town? Who wants to ride? Let's go. Let's mm -hmm. ride now. Let's ride. That's all I wanted to do when I was there. Every time I was not on a group ride, I was getting a hold. Of, I mean, I had the opportunity to meet the guys that I get to see on the internet all the time. I was super happy. So if I have the opportunity to ride with these guys, I'm, I'm going to ride. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, <laughs> I put another 561 miles in Austin um, and then came back home. Gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> so then, you know, I guess one of the things that, that I'm curious about was like, what was a day like? I mean, like walk me through waking up and then going to bed. Uh, I mean, obviously there's riding in there, but but again, I mean, you're it, it, it's almost like a, a reality TV show right. in a way where you're alone for nine, yeah, yes. you know, for nine days. Yes. yes. You know, and, traveling uh, 80 to 100 miles a day. Like, so take me through that. What is that, that part? Like? The being alone so much part. Um, it, it kind of does start playing with you towards the end. It started playing with me a little bit, not anything crazy, but I mean, I named my bike. I was talking to my bike for sure. I named my, G I named my GPS unit. Um, I was talking to cows, okay. but there's a lot of cows. You don't see any people. I have no doubt. So there's a lot of cows, a, a typical day would be, I would wake up, I would repack my camp. Mm -hmm. Um, I had my tent, had everything. I would go over the bike, make sure all the nuts, bolts, everything was tight. I would reload the bike, get on the road by seven o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I would enjoy every single sunrise I seen was absolutely beautiful. Um, coming out of Elkhart, Kansas one day, I was leaving and just the whole sky was bright pink, bright orange. There was a windmill museum right there. And so just that you feel so... You feel so small when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Right. But it makes you feel so big because of what you're doing, you know? Um, so I, I would I would wake up. I would pack up. I would get out making sure I could watch the sunrise. Um, I would usually stop, use my little jet boil, make a cup of coffee then, and then just keep going on to my next spot. And usually, typically, I would travel 50 to 70 miles before lunch, mm -hmm. um, just depending on where my little lunch spot would be. I would pull into whatever town was next on my map. I made sure I stuck to my original plan, um, no matter what. There was nothing deterring. If I said I was going to stop here and there was a stop 10 miles before there, I wouldn't stop because I wanted to stick to my plan. Sure. Um, that was one of my biggest parts of it was I wanted to see where my patience level was, where how, how disciplined I personally was um, mm -hmm. for me. Like, what could I stick to? And so I would stop, I would eat lunch, I would charge whatever battery needed charging. If it was both for a little bit, I would charge both, top off my big battery, fully charge my little battery, whatever it was. And then I would hit the road again. I would I would name cows. I would wave at every car that I, I, I would make the, all the semis honk, I would make <laughs> all the trains honk. Um, I was just, I was in such a good mood to just be able to be out and be blessed enough to be on the road for 10 days. I mean, what sounded like crazy to a lot of people was serenity for me. It was, it was very, very calming. It was very relaxing. And so hmm. every day I would be a little bummed that I would have to stop, but I would be very excited like a kid on Christmas to start the next day. Right. Um, even when I pulled into Austin, I was on live on social media and I said, I am a little bummed. 
I want to keep going. Right. I it's want, over. Yeah, it's over, man. Like, and I think that's kind of why I read next. I rode an extra 560 miles while I was in Austin because I just did not want to get off. Yeah. Um, it got me way closer to my bike. It got me way closer to myself. It was, it was just incredible. Yeah. Every every day got a little bit better. So um, you talked about the uh, the cows and the sunrises and such. Like, what are what are the things that you're going to remember? Like, what are the highlights that you're going to remember, like, to the end of your days of that trip? Elkhart, Kansas, for two reasons. One, like I just said, the sunrise that morning was one of the brightest I had ever seen. Um, I, I had originally booked a little motel room there, and I ended up not staying at that motel room. So I stopped by that motel to tell them I apologize um, that's just how I am if I don't keep my, I felt like I didn't keep my word. I know that's weird to miss a reservation and it's a business, but I felt like I, maybe these people's whole business depends on every little person that stays there. Yeah. So absolutely. I wanted to stop by, give them 20 bucks, tell them sorry. They ended up making me a home cooked meal and letting me charge in the room I was originally going to use. That's cool. So no charge, no nothing. They didn't even take my money. They just made me a little meal and stuff like that. Um, I'll never forget that. And then liberal Kansas, I stayed at an RV spot. Um, I had a couple of people try out my bike. A little older lady tried out my bike, talked with her for hours. And she reminded me of my grandma. The whole trip, the one thing that I'll remember most is humanity. Um, it showed me, I think I had mentioned that to you guys. It showed me there's still good people in this world that genuinely care about other people. I think we get so wrapped up sometimes in social media, in likes and dislikes and follows and unfollows that we forget what true human interaction is. We forget what it's like to sit down and learn somebody as opposed mm -hmm. to learn their profile. Right. Um, little, little quirks about certain people, little things that you don't realize unless you're sitting down speaking with them. Um, and I realized there are some amazing people in this whole world passing by towns with a population of 300 you know and it's literally two houses a church and a gas station and things like that are things I'll, i will never ever forget the freedom it brought me um the way being on my bike for that long made me realize who i was you know um it, it made me value myself a lot more and i think that that's i know that sounds weird but my Biggest memory is going to be the way it made me feel. Wow, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> Honestly, it's it, it was it was really it was life changing. Man, yeah, and still like when I when I think about this whole experience, like you know, trying to put myself in that type of experience, you know, it's you you can't really you don't know until you know, like right. you know, you don't know until you're out there, you're, you're riding, you're by yourself. You're seeing the sunrises. You're, you know, you're naming cows, um, yes. you know, and, <laughs> and and having that experience, it's just, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, it's incredible. Beautiful. It was incredible. So uh, the, I want to get back to the bike for a second because you know when when you were posting about doing the ride, uh, and uh, and you know the 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 social media chatter, you know, that was around. People right. asked bunches and bunches of questions about charging. Yes. You know, and, um, and about the battery, the range, uh, and some of the things that you had on your bike. Um, like, you know, let's just talk about the battery for a second. You know, so it's a 6065 battery, yes. 60 volt, 65 amp hour. Um, you know, that what did that battery do for you in terms of, in terms of range? Cause you know, again, the, the biggest question was, well, how far are you going to be able to right. go? And you brought a spare battery, you bought it, you brought a stock battery, but obviously you had a, a biggie there. Like, what did that do? What did that do for you? Like it, -wise? it cut the trip in half um, on a stock battery. I think if that trip would be doable, on a stock battery, I think I would have took me close to 20 days to make it. Um, the 6065 was giving me, A, the peace of mind to know I could complete each day the way it was supposed to com 
be able to be done. Mm -hmm. um, that battery allowed me to stick to my plan to a T. Um, it gave me, it was giving me, I was getting 30, I want to say 30, 35 miles more mm -hmm. um, than on my stock battery. So, and you were averaging, like I, I remember you saying something, you were averaging around 20 miles an hour. Is that correct? A 18 to 20 miles an hour. 18 to 20 miles. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, uh, and so on a stock controller, um, I mean, is that eco? Was that an, That's eco, an eco for you? Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. So yeah, that would be, that was an eco the whole time. Um, just because... And that, that was probably the biggest question I was getting asked. And I think that's going to be a lot of people's hurdle mm -hmm. when they go to attempt this, because there's going to be other people that try. Oh this. yeah. You're, you, the, yeah, you were the first time. I, I, yes. And I've spoke with a lot of people. I get messages almost every day on how I did it, on how they're going to do it. The number one thing I hear all the time is you should have went faster. And I want to let everybody know now. Just because something on Google maps looks like a straight line. There are hills in Kansas. There are hills in Texas. And there are rolling hills in Oklahoma. Uh -huh. People don't take that into account when they think of battery range. When batteries are getting advertised. When you're seeing some of these big companies say, hey, our battery will pull 100 miles on a single charge. That might be 100 miles riding through the flatlands of Illinois. That's not the, flat, or the flatlands of Iowa or wherever mm -hmm. they're testing batteries at. Um, I, I think that the real world range I was getting out of that battery made the trip what it was. Otherwise, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to complete it in the time I completed it. I wouldn't have been able to do the route I did. There were several stretches, I think. So on my last day, I didn't have a chance to charge my spare battery overnight. Mm -hmm. I thought I had it plugged in. I didn't have it plugged in. So I finished off the last day on one battery alone. Um, it was 78 miles from where I was at to Austin. That was my last one. I had my big battery and that was it. This was my last day. I woke up. I was not sitting around until 10 o'clock in the morning. Right. Like I said, kid on Christmas syndrome yeah, here. Yeah. I'm ready to go. It's Christmas day. This is my last day. I'm going to Austin. I realized my stock battery isn't charged. I said, you know, this is going to be it. This is it. This is, that was probably the biggest risk I took the entire trip was setting out for Austin on that last day without having two batteries ready. Yeah. Um, it's always that what if game. That what if, what if these hills are bigger than what I'm thinking? What if this, this headwind hits me harder? Yeah. What if a car bumps into me? What if any, what if I run over an armadillo and I fall? <laughs> Whatever what ifs there are. I said, you know, I know we can do it. And that was 78 miles there. I got there with 20% left on the battery. And that was probably the most hills I encountered. It was a 2,400 foot elevation gain. Whoa. From where I was to Austin. Yeah, I think it was... It, I can't remember exactly what the town was. Um, but yeah, from there to Austin was 2,400 foot elevation. Gain. And we had thought planning this whole thing out, it was going down Yeah, the whole time. It was going down the whole time until you got to that part in Texas where you had to go back up into Austin. <laughs> <laughs> and there was even days where... I would look at it and I would see on my GPS, okay, you have a 1,400 foot, you're going down 1,400 foot, 1,100 feet. Mm -hmm. But in that time, you were going up 900 feet of hills. Yeah. And it's because while you're going down, you're going up these rolling hills, going through the back roads. I'm not on the interstate here. Mm -hmm. I'm going through these. Um, so I know for a fact that without that battery, I would not have been able to do the route I did. Dope. That's cool. Um, yeah. And you know, our, the, 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 those batteries, you know, the 6065, the 7257, really all the batteries that we sell, uh, they're, um, I have very similar experience just personally, you know, I've got a 7257, um, and it's just, it's astonishing the, uh, the increase in range that you get almost regardless of what your, uh, terrain is. I mean, it's all going to be relative to how right. much, how happy you're right. How happy you're being. Right. Yeah, on the throttle. Um, so kind of back, you know, or, or still on the bike, you know, one of the things that is, is, you know, interesting to me is that, you know, how stock the bike still is. Right. Right. Um, so knowing what you know now, like, what would you do differently to the bike to either make it more comfortable or, 
um, you know, like different grips or, or, or maybe a different seat or different tires or suspension, like what, what would kind of help now that you've got this under your belt, like what would, like, help? what would, what would the perfect setup be to do? Uh, I think so. Like, yeah. Maybe we, maybe we I, talk about that. I would change like money, no object. Like what would oh, you money? No object. I mean, come on. If, money, no object. If we're dreaming, yes. we're okay, dreaming. Yes. So uh, let's, let's do a money, no object scenario here. Controller would get changed just for okay. the fact the 6065 is an amazing battery. It was great. But obviously when you throw something in bigger without changing how much you can pull off of it, the stock controller can only do so much. It's made for a stock battery. Yeah, right. So I was getting crazy range. When I finally got, I was not popping willies on the way to Austin. Mm -hmm. I mean, range was the name of the game there. When I got there, I would have really loved to have the extra power to be able to pop the bike up. Sure. Um, so I would definitely do a controller this time. And again, a couple of the times coming up those hills, I feel like I was using more power because I had less power. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, well, you feel like you're because deeper you're in the throttle. Into the yeah. throttle yeah. As opposed to if I had a different controller, I felt I would have been pulled up the hills a little bit better. Sure. Um, suspension for sure. Yeah. 100% I would change out my entire suspension. Like a cushier ride. A cushier ride. Um, I I think I, bl I, I think I actually did blow out my front shocks on this ride. Really? Um, just going through, I mean, I have nothing now, but it's going through washboards. So I wrote a, the worst day I had, I did 107 miles going through Oklahoma grasslands. Mm -hmm. I didn't touch pavement once that day. Oof. Um, and these so are it was all off-road, 107 all off -road, off road. And I seen two cars. <laughs> One of them was a semi driving a drill to the oil rig that was out there. Right. Okay. The other was like, I think a follow car for that said semi. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, that was the day I was on my wife on the phone with my wife. Hey, can you tell me when I get out of here? You know? And she's like, you don't. Oh God. <laughs> like from one camp spot to the next camp spot was just 107 miles of dirt road. And my, it could have definitely been a lot. Yeah. As far as suspension goes, um, I'm not knocking sock suspension. It's, well, this is why there are upgraded suspensions. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, we sell the, the Manitou Dorados. They've got the comp and the expert and, you know, spring versus air and either, either whichever direction you go, it's going to be gonna infinitely be more comfortable yeah. than the stock stuff. Um, and it's, you know, it's one of the things that people upgrade first. Right. Um, the forks and then, uh, and then the shock. Um, and, uh, and given the amount of weight that you are carrying on your backpack yes. and like, and the extra battery and all of that stuff, you know, shock definitely right. would so have helped out. With weight, um, I, I did have... I had 45 pounds in my backpack and then 30 pounds on each saddlebag. <laughs> so we're talking 105 pounds of extra weight on this. On top of how big I am, of course. Yeah, I but, mean, yeah. Uh, for the record, I'm 135 <laughs> pounds. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but you do the math and 240 pounds. Maybe right? a normal size yeah, adult. Yeah, right. But um, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so suspension would have made it just a lot more comfortable, yes, you know, yes. a lot more comfortable. And what, what I find uh, in most of, of, of what we do is that that's, that seems to be the theme for, for street and for dirt. I mean, dirt, obviously a bit more important as you discovered, but even on the street, you know, there's just, there's changes that you can make with the suspension and this, the, you know, the aftermarket stuff um, to really make that more cozy. Um, so what else, like, what else would you, Again, we're talking brakes. Money, no object here. Brakes. Okay, um, so brakes yeah, so stock something. brakes. We all know if we all if we if we own one of these bikes. Yes, um, and and this was a huge surprise for me, everybody. This was a very big surprise for me, because again, getting back into 135 pounds. When I'm riding my bike and it's just me, my brakes. I can endo my bike. It'll catch me every wheelie I pop up. Um, you add a hundred pounds onto me and I don't know how normal size people stop on stock brakes. Well, they I don't, they buy, you know, they come to our shop yeah. and they buy brakes. Yeah. I mean, that's really, that's the answer that, that is, like the Hayes dominion brakes are like, are, are out of this world. Yes. I, I was, I, and some of the time, all the, 
everything that goes up must come down. So all the uphills I'm talking about that were killing my battery, going downhill, there was two points where I seen my rotor actually red. <laughs> um, just and it's like, dude, and and I wasn't coming down. We're not talking coming down I 70s hills. We're talking not huge hills, but decent size. Yeah. But on top of them being bright red when I was coming to a stop, I was worried a couple times I wasn't going to actually be able to stop. Yeah. And that fear, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, every little anxiety, range anxiety, fall anxiety, all the little, all the little things that we're cautious about while we're riding anyway, mm-hmm. all those are a little bit more amplified because you're alone. There's no cars passing. There's no anything. Right. So these small things that we sometimes overthink and take for granted, hey, if we wreck on our local trail or if something breaks down, we can call a buddy, something like that. There's no escape plan. My escape plan was a Garmin inReach SOS. Mm-hmm. And I'm not hitting an SOS button unless it's an actual SOS. Sure. Yep. So you have to be absolutely prepared. And that was the one thing out of all the upgrades. I think that's the one thing I was kind of kicking myself in the butt about not doing before I left was upgrading my brake sets because I was so set on the going. I was so set on the go, go, go battery power. How am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? Stopping is usually the last thing people think about. A hundred percent. Correct. I mean, we, we have that. I know we have that conversation so many times with customers, you know, how fast can I go? How fast can I go? What can I do? Like, you know, we, we sell the BAC 4,000 and the 8,000 and they have, you know, they have their differences, you know, in terms of what their capabilities are. But, but the, the common is people want to go fast. Well, what, what I try and do is, okay, well, Let's get you going faster, but we need you to, we, you got to think about stopping faster, right. stopping better. I mean, these, the components, some of the components on the bikes, the, these bikes that come stock, they're built for 38 pound mountain bikes, right? you know, with, with an average size human. Well, now you've got a bike that stock weighs 120 something pounds. Then you put all of this extra weight on yes. it. I mean, in what you're saying, you were in the, the realm of 240 pounds. Um, that's a really big human riding a mountain bike, but now you add that extra 80 something pounds onto the stress of those brakes. And so that's, that is, that's a common, uh, that's a common upgrade that, that people do. And, people and you're right. Then yes. they, they really do. They overlook. Uh, and we, we see it a lot. We see, metal on metal on brake pads and they've only ridden the bike, you know, 200 miles. Yes. Uh, and, or brake fade, you know, the danger brakes people, (laughs) the the levers like go all the way to the grips, Yes. you know, when you're going downhill. And so, um, so cool. All right. So brakes, um, anything else? Suspension, lowering brakes. Um, I don't, honestly, I can't, I can't really think of much else. Um, controller brakes and suspension is honestly if i could do it and that's still having a battery Mm -hmm. would do controller brake suspension i think the 6065 was a great option for the trip i did um at some point i might start looking into a 72 volt setup or something i don't think they get much bigger than 6065 the Mm -hmm. one thing i would like to avoid next time and i don't know if that's something that's going to be possible carrying a second battery Mm-hmm. Um, the carrying it wasn't the problem. It's getting out on uneven highways and swapping out batteries. Mm. Um, if I could go with one battery mm-hmm. that had a quicker charge, mm. um, like a fast charger or a rapid variable charger or something like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. change it up. Um, I think that would be just about the only thing different as far as power or battery goes. Like I said, controller, obviously would change up the game in a lot of aspects. It'd give me the extra power I needed, Mm -hmm. but I can't, I can't really think of nothing else that I would add or take away. Even Um, if someone would come out with a really good pannier setup for (laughs) a saddlebag setup for, for Sir for Emoto, that would be pretty cool. But yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so I want to touch on the 60 versus 72 because that is also a topic that we talk to yes. a lot of people about. I think a lot of people are curious. About yeah. That. And, and it's, you know, it, it, the, 
when we first started talking about the the battery, you know, choosing the right battery and the fact that you were taking a spare battery, right. you know, we stuck with 60, um, 60 volt because a 60 volt battery needs a 60 volt charger. Yes. 72 volt battery needs a 72 volt charger. Right. So you can have two different voltages and bring two different chargers, but now you've got an extra seven pounds yep. of a charger carrying extra. that you're carrying. And so clearly that doesn't make sense. Right. So the 6065 was, um, was definitely the better choice. When you talk about the 7257, you've got another 200 to 250 watt hours. So technically, you know, on a, uh, on paper, it has more range. Right. And 72 volt systems just run more efficiently. Right. They create less heat. Uh, and so that can also play into range as well, especially when the motor's sitting there working for eight hours right. a day. You know, heat is the enemy when it exactly, comes to yes. when it comes to these things, not only the batteries, but also the motors. Uh, and so 72 volt um, would definitely be the name of the game, I think, for for you moving forward. For um, sure. You know, and uh, then with, with, because with, and then with a with a if I change controllers, I would be able to tune it. To a point to when I do stuff like this. Oh yeah. Would, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So with our power kit, you've got eight, di uh, eighteen different power modes. So you've got nine modes in eco, nine modes in sport. You know, when you're traveling, when you're really focused on range, then you use your settings in yes. eco. When you want to like do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> trying to think of the right word, but like really get on it. You know, burn rubber, pop wheelies you know, piss off gas bikes, right. like whatever you want to do, like really give it the beans because these, you know, between the kit and the battery, you can push 14, 15, 16 kilowatts when your bike is, you know, when your bike stock is 5,000, right. You know, that's 300% more Increase. horsepower, yes. you know, technically, um, not to mention the phase amps, which is torque. And so all the things that make these bikes significantly more exciting, right. you, with the controller, you just, whoop, you know, yep. you can just turn that just up. Get it right. On your phone, right? Like you just, you just queue up your phone. You're like, yeah. Or you want more regenerative braking. So you just pull up your phone. You're like, all right, well, I just want to regenerate braking. Yep. Um, so. And the BAC does all that. All of it. Sweet. All of it. Yep. Yep. And you can have a, uh, an app on your phone and, you know, and make those adjustments in real time. Nice. So, um, so uh, the last topic that I want to talk about is these mega rides. So, so you went to Austin for the Austin mega ride. Uh, and then I saw online that now you are like the mega ride dude. Oh, yes. So, so t tell me about that. Like, how did all how did all of a sudden you be the mega ride dude in the in the United States? Um, so, uh, Sir on Texas, uh, Scott, everyone knows him as Sir on Texas, is the guy who started the mega rides. Mm -hmm. um, he had been putting them on in Texas. He's done some. I mean, Tampa. These these have been going on for a few years now nationwide. Um, it is the biggest e bike ride out possibly in the world that we know of. Um, especially when it comes down to what we ride, to Surons, Talarius, things like this. Mm -hmm. It is definitely the biggest e-moto ride out in the world. And I went down there. He had, he had been a huge support of this ever since he found out I was riding my bike to his ride. Um, <laughs> he got a hold of me then and said, dude, I've been doing this for three years. You are crazy. He was like, everybody. Because when I initially announced it, it got real, real Everyone was talking about it. Everyone. Not in just a good way. I mean, there were probably 80% of people were saying, look at this idiot that thinks he can really ride from yeah. to Austin. Yeah. But um, <laughs> as we all know, negative publicity is still publicity. So it blew right. up. He got a hold of me and asked me, hey, are you serious? Are you really going to ride your bike to my mega ride? Yeah, I am. Um, and so he got behind it kind of as a friend and as a sponsor. Um, he helped me out with a decent amount of the trip. Big shout out, sir, on Texas. And then I stayed with him down in Texas. Seeing the way the mega rides went, I have put on big rides in the PEV scene. I've been doing PEV now for, I've been in this scene for four and a half, five years. Um, 
I've always led rides. Um, I lead a big group in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Went out to Vegas, did e-skate con this last year, and I led 300 electric skateboards, electric unicycles, and one wheels down the strip on a Suron as a professional electric skateboarder. So electric skateboarding, I'm sorry, guys, I can't get off bikes. But um, and <laughs> it's so, a sickness. It's a sickness. It really is. And so I led that ride. And that was huge. Um, so I kind of have a resume for leading rides. It's kind of mm-hmm. what I, I'm really good at organizing. I'm very hyper. Multitasking is something that calms me down, as crazy as that sounds. So I like having 10 different things going on at once. It kind of gives me a place to focus my energy. After Scott sat down and talked with me for a while and seen how I was in person and was like, dude, you really don't want to stop. Like, really just want to ride like like when i pulled up in austin the fact that i was putting together a ride after riding 1055 miles <laughs> before i even ate kind of blew people's mind um i gained a lot of respect from the community from doing that mm-hmm. i love the community i think it came through once people met me in person um exactly how much i like this how much i liked being involved in things like this scott had um Kind of been talking about stepping away from Mega Ride for a few different reasons. Um, those are his personal reasons. I'm not going to put those out there. Sure. But me and him had spoke about kind of as a joke at first. Kind of what was a joke at first about me riding it? Texas was like, hey, you can throw one. My only thing was I'm so new in the community. How would the community react to me throwing a Mega Ride or possibly organizing Mega Rides? Mm-hmm. Like in Austin or just as nationwide. Okay. All right. So, um, we talked to a few other people and everybody was, we were getting great feedback from it, from just the idea of me officiating mega rides, getting some things together, seeing what I could do with that event. Mm -hmm. Um, and so before I left Austin, me and Texas sat down and talked, um, and one thing led to another and. I'm now officiating mega rides. Um, we have them put together. We just dropped Tampa dates. March 1st through the 3rd will be Tampa. June 14th through the 16th will be Chicago. September 27th through to the 29th will be Las Vegas. Um, and we're thinking each one of these rides is going to get bigger. We had 162 Surons and Talarias in Austin. And that's just Surons and Talarias. That's not counting Razors. That's not counting other e-bikes. And that's not counting the EUCs that were there. We, oh wow! So you had more, you had more attendees. We had more attendees that. than just that's just what we were counting as Sir Antalaria because sure. that's what the ride kind of focuses around. Yeah, for sure. That's what showed up. We're thinking Tampa should be two hundred plus. We're thinking Chicago around two twenty, and we're hoping because of how big Vegas is and the amount of West Coast connections, West Coast people. Shout out all my West Coast people. I love mm-hmm. you guys. Um, but sh- all the West Coast connections I have, I think we'll be able to pull three hundred plus riders for the Suron Mega Ride in Vegas. Man. Yes. Um, it's just, it's something, everybody, if you love electric dirt bikes, you can come out, you can see, you can see these BAC 8000s, you can see the big batteries, you can see all the new stuff that's going on in the community. You can talk to these people that, people think Suron is a movie star, Grommy Bear is a movie star. Guys, I love you guys, but they're not movie stars, they're real human beings. Um, Suron is a good friend of mine, so is Will, uh, Grommy Bear. And, these guys are normal human beings that ride bikes just like we do. Mm-hmm. You go to an event like this, you get to meet these people and see that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you get a person, you get a like personal interaction. They're riding bikes too. Mm-hmm. They love the same thing you do. You know, and it's that's what makes this community so amazing. Is there's so many different walks of life. There's there's people like me that are sitting down with judges, lawyers, doctors, real estate moguls to to old homeless people. And we're all just riding a bike. And at the end of the day, that's what brings us all together. And that's what's most important is we're all coming to the same place for this one same passion. You know, and it doesn't matter what you did for work that day. It doesn't matter if you're fighting with your wife or your significant other. It doesn't matter what other things you have going on in your life. When you get on a bike and you're around a hundred other people that love their bike as much as you love your bike... It does something different for your heart. It does something bigger than people always complain about. Oh, these electric bikes cost five grand. And then once you get them, it's you're five grand into upgrading. You're five grand into this. Who, 
who wouldn't spend any amount of money to bring themselves peace? You know, like what is money if you don't have happiness? What is money? What is all these other things if you don't have that one thing in your life that settles you, that brings you to to that point where everything's okay again? And it sounds funny to outsiders that we love these bikes and we love riding so much. But this isn't just me who loves this. This is you that love oh, yeah. as much as yeah. this. This is the owner that I love. This is everybody involved in this community loves these bikes just as much as the next guy. Well, it's the same as somebody, you know, saying that they love to hike a 14er, you know, and that's their happy place. Right. And that's what they do. Or they want to go to a, um, like a, 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 a youth camp, you know, to help youths, you right. know, in Africa. Right. You know, like that's what brings them peace and that's what they want to do. And I agree with you. There's, there's a, uh, there's people on this earth that use this as their escape. It's not drugs, you know, it's not hiking 14ers. It's not doing 200 miles an hour on a sport bike. Like it's riding these bikes. And so, um, so yeah, it's, there's, there are going to be plenty of people that you come across that are going to share the same, yes. you know, the same love for that. And that's what I love so much about Mega Ride. And that's why I'm so excited to be in the position I'm in. Um, Mega Ride is not my ride. Mega Ride, I don't, I don't want anybody to think it's Caddy's ride. It's anything like that. Mega Ride is a community ride. And that's why I'm so excited to be part of it. To bring joy to this community the way... I brought my whole family up here today because I'm doing a podcast. Um, Things like this for me are huge. I was sleeping in dumpsters seven years ago. So when I come and I get the opportunity to do things like this and it's because of bikes or it's because of stuff like that, um, it makes me feel like a rock star. It makes me feel like I'm famous, like I'm I'm famous. When I went to that ride, people made me t-shirts that said what I had done Everybody knew who I was because they all followed the journey. Mm -hmm. I want every single person to attend Mega Ride to know what that 15 seconds of fame feels like. I want everybody to be a rock star in their own mind while they are at that ride. And that's what I'm striving to do with Mega Rides this year is bring, give everybody a chance to see the newest products, give everybody a chance to see the newest bikes, give everybody a chance to feel like they are Saronster or they are a rock star or this is everybody's community. It's not just one person's. And I want everybody to feel like that. (laughs) I feel like that. (laughs) You should that. I feel like that. Definitely should. You're Um, a rock star too. (laughs) Um, so I guess final thing here then, like what's, what's next? Like what's, what's up your sleeve you know, between now and I guess the next mega ride, because you said March, right? March, was March, the is, first. The, March is the next mega ride. March mm-hmm. will be Tampa. Um, me and my wife are currently planning a ride to Four Corners. Oh, yes. Okay. 462 miles, the route we're taking there, 462 back. That's light work. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, after uh, yeah, after yeah. this. Yeah, that's a little. 480 yeah. mile ride is then nothing. Yeah. I was thinking about riding here today, yeah, actually. Right? But um, no, um, that's the next one. Uh huh. And when are you planning on doing that? Either December or January. Okay. All right. Um, and then I'm depending on weather, I will either ride to Tampa, or I will ride to Chicago Mega Ride. Um, I have a couple people talking to me about a Florida Los, to Los Angeles ride, coast to coast. It's like four hundred. It's four thousand six hundred and something miles. The route I would take. It would take me roughly 45 to 50 days to do it. Um, But across country, I don't know if that's going to be next year or the year after, just because that's talking a lot of money. Um, I don't think people understand the amount of money that goes into being on the road for that long. Um, You you think, oh, I'll just camp and eat rugged and do even camping and eating rugged. I mean, I did this trip with a budget of $43 a day. And that was, there were days that were really hard to do. Mm-hmm. Um, because $43 barely paid for either a campsite or a motel room. Yeah. And you got to figure out food, food, but yeah. I did it. And then when I got to Austin, I think, I mean, I think we even made jokes about this. I had like, I think on my last day of Austin, I had six, $7 to my name. 
But when you ride that much, what do you need money for? Right. You just need money to stop and eat and stay places. <laughs> and I do want to make that known to anybody that wants to set out on one of these. Make sure you have thousands of dollars saved, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, 45 days, 45 to 50 days on the road. I mean, that's it, that's a commitment. At man. minimum, it would cost yeah. three grand. Yeah. Wow. But okay. So my next move is going to be Four Corners and then either riding from Colorado to Tampa or Colorado to Chicago. Um, the coolest part I think about the next one will be my wife will be involved. I know I was the first one to do it a long distance period um, on an electric dirt bike. I think she will be the first woman to ever do a long distance on any kind of e-bike. Period. Really? We cannot find anyone on YouTube. If I'm wrong, feel free. Anybody can correct me, but we have researched and researched this. And I know she will be the first girl to even ride further than 100 miles on a dirt on a Saran. I think we need to call Guinness. So the, yes, Guinness yes. Book of World Records I, needs to get couples, involved. Um, so, so uh, a couple's cross country or a couple's long distance is what's next. Oh and man, that's exciting. It's gonna be it's gonna be incredible. Yeah, but I I do plan on. Uh, I don't know if this is this is not one trip particular, but I do plan on doing twenty thousand miles next year. For so for twenty twenty four, you plan on twenty twenty four? I miles. will do twenty thousand plus miles. Mark my words. Okay. I can guarantee that to everybody. Okay. I will pull 20,000. That is my goal. <laughs> uh, so I will pull 20,000 miles next year on an electric dirt bike. I, And I'm saying it on an electric dirt bike because I'm backing myself on that so I don't go back on what I'm saying. Sure. I don't want to end up getting some pedal bike and cheating, not an EUC, not the time. So I do ride electric drift bikes professionally and mm -hmm. I do ride electric skateboards professionally. Both those I still do. I still ride my board 30 miles a day and I still do about... 20 to 30 on my trike a day so all the miles we're talking right now is just what i'm doing on my bike wow that's not what i do on my other stuff mm -hmm. um i ride an average of 100 miles a day on all three feet dang so but the twenty thousand miles next year that is just on the bike yeah okay and i want to see what well, components i will start in january i'll put out a list of what components i have on my bike mm -hmm. and we will cross them off one by one as they fail as what goes down is what goes down and what will last 20,000 miles. <laughs> if anything will last 20,000 miles right. beside a frame. Well, I mean, heck, most of your bike has lasted 6,000 miles. Yes, my, right? right, right. So no, I'm still on my stock front too, like we were talking about. <laughs> um, I have not changed a belt. I have not changed um, anything on a chain. Crazy. I haven't, I haven't changed wheels. I haven't, nothing, nothing. Throttle's still the same throttle. Man, that's impressive. You guys changed my grips. Yeah. Right before I left. Well, you got to be comfortable, man. <laughs> your very hands, your hands yeah, got to be comfortable. comfortable. Uh, well, I can't wait to see um, this Four Corners ride. Um, uh, we definitely want to, you know, help out any way we can. So awesome. we'll have that conversation. But um, thank you for your time. This thank was you awesome. Thank you guys very much. Yeah. I appreciate you. All right.